Hello everybody, it's Detectives here and today we're going to set up RetroPie 3.6 on the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. Now this is a complete beginner's guide so I'm going to show you how to do this as easy as possible. If you are a more advanced user, I'll point you to links and resources along the way to help you get more out of your RetroPie install. So let's not waste any more time and take a look at what we're going to cover today. So here is everything we're going to look at today. This menu will be interactive, so if you do know how to complete some of the steps, just click on what you want to see and it will take you to that part of the video. I'll also leave links throughout the video to get back to this menu and to skip forward and back a section. Throughout the tutorial I'll also be leaving links to other videos, so when they do open up in a new tab, watch them and then come back to this video and resume from there. Now all of that is out of the way, let's have a look at what we need to get this running. So here's all our hardware. It might look like a lot, but some of this stuff is optional and you don't need every single piece. Starting from the left, we've got our controllers. I use an Xbox 360 or a DualShock 3 gamepad, but any USB style controller will work. Up the top we have a power adapter and a HDMI cable. For the Pi 2 you will want a good quality 2 amp power adapter, and if you're using the Raspberry Pi 3, you want to have a minimum of 2.5 amps. To find out what yours is, take a close look at the text on the adapter and look for DC2A or 2.5A. We need a micro SD card. 8GB will be the minimum, but I recommend 16 or 32GB, and this card should be at least class 10, which represents the read and write speeds of the card. A USB thumb drive will be used to transfer ROMs, and a micro SD card reader will be used to write RetroPie to our micro SD card. A USB keyboard makes setup a lot easier, so make sure you have one of these. And then we need our Raspberry Pi. I've got a Model 2 and 3 that I'll be using, and either of these will work just fine. The benefit of the Raspberry Pi 3 is we have onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so you can skip the optional dongles on the right, which will leave some of our USB ports open for more controllers. Also in the optional area is a Ethernet cable, which can be used in place of your Wi-Fi dongle. Now both of these are optional, we don't need Wi-Fi or Ethernet to set up our RetroPie install. So if you do have one of these, it's handy to use, but it's not necessary. So now all our hardware is gathered, let's go get the software. To install RetroPie, there's four things we'll need to download. One is 7-zip, number two is SD card formatter, number three is Win32 disk imager, and number four is the RetroPie image. If you head down to the description, you'll see links 1, 2, 3, and 4, and if you click these, it will take you to what you see on screen now. To make things easy, I've also added link 0, and that will include all the software from those other links, ready to double click and install. I recommend getting this one for the easiest setup. Once that software has downloaded, simply open the folder, and double click on item 1, 2, and 3, and wait for them to install, and then you're ready to download RetroPie. You can access that website from shortcut 4 in my download link, or go to petrockblock.com. Once you are there, click on the RetroPie project menu, then click on downloads, and it will take us to this page. From here we want to select RetroPie SD card image for Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. If you're using a Pi 0 or Pi 1, click the link for that one instead. On the next page we will choose the standard version. Once you click that, it will start downloading, so choose your desktop and then push OK and wait for it to download. This file is 800 megabytes, so it could take anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes depending on your connection speed. Once that download does finish though, we need to uncompress our file, ready to write our image to an SD card. We do need 7-zip installed for this, so simply right click on the file, choose the 7-zip submenu and then click Extract here. Took me about 20 seconds on my system, but it could take a little bit longer on yours depending on what speed your processor is. After that is done, we are ready to write our image file to an SD card. For that we're going to use Win32 Disk Imager and SD Card Formatter to prepare our SD card. So the first thing we'll need to do is put our SD card into our SD card reader, and then insert that into our PC. On Windows 10, our drive letter will show on the Action Center on the right. On Windows 7, you usually get a pop-up saying open this folder, and that will tell us our drive letter. My drive is letter I. Now we want to open SD card formatter, make sure our drive is selected, give this drive a name, I'm going to call mine RetroPie, 
and then we click Format. To be safe during this step, it would be a good idea to disconnect any other USB drives you do have connected. When you do click Format, it's going to give you a warning message. Just click OK and we're ready to move on. Next, we will write our image to the SD card using Win32 Disk Imager. Open up the program, make sure your drive is selected in this menu here, and then we're going to click this little folder icon and select our Raspberry Pi image that we extracted to the desktop before. Hit open when that file is selected, verify that you do have that correct drive letter, mine is I, and then we want to hit write. This will take a few minutes, so let it complete, it will give you an OK message once it's done, and then we can remove our SD card from our computer and prepare to load up our Pi. Now we are getting close to powering this bad boy on, but first we need to plug everything in. The first thing I'm going to plug in is the micro SD card, then I'm going to take my wired controller, I'm going with the DualShock 3 to start, and I'm also going to use the wired version because it's a little bit easier to set up, and plug that in. This is my keyboard going in now, and that's going to be very handy during setup, so plug that in. And then we also need our HDMI and then our power. So I'm plugging them in now. At the moment, I'm not going to plug in our USB drive for ROM transfer. That's going to wait a little bit till after setup. And for me personally, I won't be inserting my Wi-Fi dongle because this is the Raspberry Pi 3 and it has onboard Wi-Fi. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 2, you can install that now. But it is completely optional and we do not need Wi-Fi or internet connection to get things running. Don't forget we also have the option for Ethernet and if we do plug this cable in, we just need to take the other end and plug it into our modem or router. Now if your modem or router is not in the same room, this will be a little bit difficult and that's where the Wi-Fi does come in handy. But once again, it is not a requirement. Plug the other end of the HDMI cable into your TV or monitor, plug in the power and we are ready to go. So here we go, this is the first time the Pi is booting up. Now I may speed up or slow down some of the video to make this thing go a little bit quicker, but this is essentially what you will be seeing. While this is loading, I will give you a bit of a rundown on things. So when RetroPie loads, we load into Emulation Station, and this is known as the front end of the RetroPie distribution. In the back end we have the terminal, and we'll sometimes access that to edit advanced settings, or maybe change some configuration files. Emulation Station is not specific to RetroPie. You can type that into Google and you can download this front end for your Windows or Linux PC if you like. When I refer to the terminal, it's actually like MS-DOS but on Linux. So we will be learning to use some Linux commands and you can transfer this to other distributions like Ubuntu. Now Emulation Station has loaded, we need to configure our keyboard. So just hold enter until you see this screen and then let's configure the keys. As you're going through this, set up the keys as you like, but just take note of your Start, Select and A and B keys, as we will use them to navigate through the menus the most. When you get down to these analog stick sections, just set whatever you like, they're not as important, unless you want to try and play analog stick style games on your keyboard, which I do not recommend. If you do want to skip configuring some of these keys, simply hold Escape, and that will set them as not defined. If you do make any mistakes, just wait till you get to the bottom and then use the keyboard arrows to go up and push A to select and remap another key. Once everything is as you like it, go back to the bottom to OK and push your A button. This will bring us to the Emulation Station main menu, but before we get excited and start looking around here, we will set up our gamepad. So what you want to do is push your Start button again, for me that is Enter. Go down to Configure Input and then push our A key. If you get taken back to the emulation station screen, you've actually pushed start and not the A button. So try that again and then push the A button to bring up this screen again. Now on a DualShock 3 or Xbox 360 controller, we'll need to hold our PS or Xbox button for the controller to be recognized. Hold this down and you're ready to configure your keys. On the more generic controls, test and hold down various buttons until it does pick up your controller. While configuring your controller, you may notice that a button is missed or something is misconfigured. Don't panic if this happens, just keep going until you get to the bottom and then use your keyboard to navigate back up and select the ones which did not work correctly and then retry those configurations. Sometimes I've had to try this three, four, five, maybe six times and it can be a bit of a pain, but keep at it and it'll eventually work. Once everything is set, go back down to the bottom to OK and push your A button and now we're ready to do some configuration. For more on advanced control setup, check out link 5, 6, 
7 and 8 in the description and you'll learn how to set up your PS3, Xbox 360, Bluetooth and default controls for all emulators like seen on screen now. Back on the home screen, keep pushing left until you find the RetroPie menu. On here push A and then we want to go down to the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, RasPi Config. On the way there, you can choose to configure Wi-Fi with the A button if you do have that plugged in. Otherwise, keep pushing down and use A to select. Now, when we get to this next set of menus, the key presses are going to be a little different. If you're using the keyboard, you're going to use up, down, left, right and enter to select. And if you're using your gamepad, you're going to use your analog stick to go up, down, left and right. And your select button will act as enter. With RetroPie 3.6, we don't need to expand file system because that is already done for us on startup. If you do have the Raspberry Pi 2, go down to the Overclock menu and choose the Pi 2 Overclock which is the last option and press Enter. This will not work on the Raspberry Pi 3 so don't try that. Next we're going to go down to Advanced Options and push Enter there. And the first thing I'm going to fix is Overscan. Now if you look closely at my screen I've got these black bars around the main blue area. That means my Overscan setting is wrong. I'm going to go into this menu and I'm going to choose Disable but only choose this if you do have the black bars and if that doesn't fix it, try enabling it instead. Every monitor is different so it's a bit of trial and error. Now we're going to have to go back down to the advanced options menu again and this time we're going to select the memory split option which is number 3. For now we're going to set this to 320 which is a good compromise value. If you do want to learn more about this, go down to the description and look at link 9 and 10 and you can maybe determine what would be best for you depending on how you're going to use your Pi. So that's about all we have to do here. So now we just have to go down to the bottom menu and select Finish and push Enter and our Pi will restart. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is a more advanced setup and it's only going to work if you do have an internet connection. Go back to the RetroPie menu and choose RetroPie Setup and push A. The first thing you should always do when you come to this menu is to update the RetroPie Setup script. Push Enter on that item just to make sure you have the latest packages installed and it will make sure all installations go smoothly. So what can we do from here? Item 1, binary based installation, will update our whole RetroPie installation to the newest version. So if version 3.7 came out, we would select option 1 and it would update RetroPie to that. If you go to menu option 3, setup slash configuration, you can do some cool things like setting up your PS3 controllers for Bluetooth, install wireless drivers for your Xbox 360 gamepad, or some more advanced things like setting up your I.O. pins for use with a gamepad or arcade controls. Option 5, install individual emulators from binary or source, will allow us to update and install emulators. Now when you do this, always choose the binary version because the source version can take a long time, sometimes over a day, to get that installed. Option 4, experimental packages, is also a good menu to know because this is where we install Kodi. As of version 3.6, Kodi is item number 257 in this menu, but there's also a lot of other cool stuff, so have a look through there and see if anything tickles your fancy and give it a shot. So that's about all that's relevant in these menus, guys, so have a look through them, familiarize yourself with them and install or try anything you want to try. And then when you're done, just go down and click Perform Reboot and wait for Emulation Station to load back up. Now it's time for the games. Remember our USB storage drive which we prepared earlier? Well now we're going to use that. The first thing you want to do is plug it into your home PC and then open up the drive. It's best to make sure the drive is empty and then once that's done, create a new folder and name it RetroPie. That's all we need to do on our PC for now, so then close that off and safely remove the drive and get ready to plug it into the Pi. Make sure the Pi is powered up and emulation station is loaded. Once that is confirmed, simply plug in your USB drive as so but keep an eye on the little indication light. It will start off with a few short blinks and then stop, but then it will go a little bit wild for about 5 to 10 seconds, and that's when it's safe to remove. This whole process for me took around 30 seconds, but if you want to be sure, wait around 1 minute. What's happening here is it's creating ROM folders on our USB drive to transfer across from PC. Once you are sure all that blinking is complete, pull out that USB thumb drive again, and then we're going to re-plug it back into our PC. So now I have plugged my USB drive back into the computer and I'm going to open up that drive one more time. And this time we're going to double click on that RetroPie folder we created earlier and look at that, we've got configs and ROMs folder. Open up the ROMs and you can see all the systems that RetroPie supports. 
Simply take the ROMs that you have and drag them into the individual folders. I'm going to transfer one N64 ROM into this folder here, and then I'm going to do one SNES game into the SNES folder. And finally one PlayStation CD image, and there a bin and a Q file for that into the PSX folder. That's going to take a little bit longer because it is a CD image and it is quite big. So once that's done, do the same as before and safely remove your USB thumb drive, and then we're going to plug it back into the Pi. Now on this second try plugging it in, what's going to happen is all the ROMs on that USB thumb drive are going to be copied onto your SD card. Now depending how well you loaded your USB thumb drive up, this could take a while. A good rule of thumb is, if it took you 15 minutes to copy stuff onto the USB drive, it's probably going to take that long, if not longer, to get back across to the SD card. So once again, keep a close eye on the blue flashing light, and once that is done, remove it from your Pi. If you do pull it out early, there's nothing to be afraid of, you just won't have everything copied across. Now, jumping back to Emulation Station on our Raspberry Pi using our gamepad or keyboard, we need to get the ROMs to show up. How we do that is very easy. Push Enter or your Start button, and then we want to go down to Quit and push A. On the next menu, select Restart Emulation Station, and on Reboot, you should be greeted with a few new menus. All the systems for the ROMs you copied across will now be showing up. And it is now almost time to play. What I'm going to quickly teach you about now is the various emulators sometimes available for each system. When you select a ROM, you'll quickly see this menu pop up asking you to configure emulators. On the first boot of a new game, it is a good idea to push a button to get into this menu. This is where we'll see the various options available for each system, and where we can set custom video modes on what resolution each game runs at. Option 1 will allow us to select the default emulator for all ROMs for that system. If you find some games work better with one emulator version or another, this is where we use option 2, select emulator for ROM. Everything we set in this screen will be saved to the RetroPie configuration files, so the next time we run this game, it will know the exact settings to use. What you're seeing me set on screen now is what I think is the best setup for N64, but not every game will run well, and this is where a bit of experimentation is required. And to help with that, check out link 11 in the description below, click the system you're interested in, and then look for a compatibility list and the various comments in those files to see what will work best. Once everything is set, go down to the launch option and push enter on the keyboard or select on our gamepad, and we'll be gaming. Now, we've almost finished up, but one final thing, shortcut keys on your gamepad. On screen now are some of the default shortcuts for most emulators, but some will be different. To get the more advanced setups, head down to link 11 once again and click on your desired system. So that is it guys, that brings us to the end of the beginner's guide to RetroPie 3.6. Hope you did enjoy this tutorial, and if it did help, please give it a thumbs up on the video and do subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of reviews, tutorials and tests on various electronic gadgets. Make sure you click through my videos to find some advanced tutorials on setting up RetroPie and some other videos on the Raspberry Pi 3. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.